Today my goal is to beat all 5 challenges from my Fall Guys videos in Stumble Guys. First we have the Social Distancing Challenge, where I'm not allowed to touch any other players. So the key to this challenge is to expect the unexpected, otherwise you end up in situations like this. Plenty of open space... No shot, right? In case there was any doubt he touched me there, he made sure to bump into me afterward. This challenge gets even more difficult when you have to work together with other people, or even drive a car. Finally, things started to go my way when I got the right levels. A wide open area where everyone gets separated is perfect for staying away from other people. I still have to be careful when I'm sharing an island with someone, but we finally got past the first round. Beautiful. The less people, the easier it gets then I can just focus on winning. Round 2 is fantastic for the same reason. Everyone wants to go towards the front so they don't fall victim to this purple void, but that makes it very easy to stay alive in the back and wait for other people to mess up. We're going with the same idea for the final round, Block Dash. Everyone wants to go up front, so we have to stay back. Fitting through tight spaces is not ideal for what we're trying to do. <sighs> that was close. But eventually, people started to fall off. Now we can go towards the front and win the 1v1 to close this out. Yeah! We got one! That's one out of five, baby. Social distancing complete. There's four more challenges left, including one that took me over 10 hours to beat in Fall Guys. Luckily, we can save that for last and go for no touching obstacles next. My biggest problem on this one is obstacles that move unpredictably. Spinners are fine, but when the spinners are hitting balls around, that puts me in a bad spot. Whoa, the balls. The balls are going to be scary. Rip. Even if I adjust to be more cautious of this, I risk not qualifying in time. Taking away traction makes it harder to not bump into stuff, which leads to really close calls like this one. I think we managed to evade it, though. Let's double check. The snowball was slowed down by these two gold guys, giving me just enough time to dive and get my legs over it. I almost fell off the side when trying to avoid the spinners, and almost lost the challenge when someone bumped me in midair. I dove just in time to avoid the bumper. Wow. That was pretty sweet. Shark Muda Triangle is really easy because you're never forced to get close to the sharks or red barrels. On the surface, this final round looks fantastic. Holy moly, this is perfect. I don't see anything on the screen that could be counted as an obstacle when the round starts. Then these cars show up, and I realize that both the spikes and moving bars would count. After some maneuvers to avoid both of these, I was surrounded by cars that had them. But I realized that the other guy was way behind and decided to wait it out. Yeah, we were able to just wait him out. That's two down. The no falling challenge, or <clears throat> no stumbling challenge, is up next. My first attempt was going great until I made it to the final and fell over when I clipped through part of the floor. An intentional dive is okay, but sliding on accident is not. I noticed that the stumbling mechanics work differently from Fall Guys. Bumping into a slow object is enough to knock you off balance, but falling from high up is not. After I spent some time adjusting to the mechanics and level design, I was ready to get cooking. There's plenty of slime on this level to watch out for, but I had no problem staying upright. Round 2, however, poses many problems for us. This is the NFL level, and footballs bounce unpredictably. If we went out of our way to avoid everything, we wouldn't make it in time. So it's time to get aggressive and risk some close calls. That was close. Everyone finished around the same time, so if I waited any longer than that, I wouldn't have made it to the final. We'll get there. Barely. Bot Bash is one of the more difficult finals if you're trying not to fall. We have to avoid all 9 of these bots the entire time, and I notice that touching them even once will make you stumble. However, the skill-based nature of this level is on my side, since you can predict where each bot will go after it bounces. I decided that the best way to close this out was to forget about the challenge and play normally. Aside from the bots and paints, another player almost caused my downfall when they were hit close to me, but in the end, we got it done. Yes! That was clutch. 
very intense final, but we got there. The next challenge would be getting a gold medal in every round, but Stumble Guys doesn't have medals, so we can translate this one. Whenever the counter at the top right says qualified, we have to qualify first. Up to this point, I've never finished first on a level, but that becomes easier when I don't have other challenges holding me back. Getting blasted high into the air seemed to help me more than it hurt, since we're already climbing up a slope. I nailed round one on my first try. I got a bad start on icy heights, and it's harder to take the lead when you're working in tight spaces. We'll have some odds to overcome, like that too. Not feeling great about it, but we'll do what we can. I clawed my way back to the front, but whiffed at the end. Just barely got beat there, and we fell off anyways. The challenge isn't giving me too much trouble, but I had a costly mistake. The other guy messed up too though, so I pulled this one off with a clean finish. Getting an elimination round next helps a lot, but I still have to be careful. Someone else bumped me into a spike, and I was lucky enough to bounce upward instead of back. Whoa. Dude, that was so lucky. <laughs> that was insanely lucky. This is the most intense final yet. If I'm not aware of my surroundings for even a second, I'll get blown up. Looked like it was gonna sneak up on me. Things got really real when we were down to the final three. Both of my tiles were blown up, and I had to join the other two players. We can jump on the barrels if necessary. Looks like it will be necessary. That was a crazy save. It didn't take long for me to get absolutely bombarded, so I had to rely on the floating barrels to reach the only remaining tile. Wow. Dude, we are insane. How did they survive? Even though the others managed to survive, it didn't take long for a bomb to finish them. Yes! Dude, that was hype. The challenge didn't come into play that much, but that was an insane final. We've gone four for four on these challenges so far, but the last one is by far the most difficult. We have to win without jumping, but there's a catch. When I did this in Fall Guys, you could still dive on the ground to clear small gaps. But this mechanic works much differently in Stumble Guys, where you can only dive after jumping. This means we have to win without jumping or diving, which is only possible on about half of the levels. More often than not, I can find a way to make this work on the first two rounds. Even on levels like Honey Drop and Space Drop, I can find just enough time to survive. Oh man, being on the bottom level so quickly is not good. We can't even dive. Whoa! Just barely. I'm looking for workarounds where I can, but all it takes is a small ledge or obstacle to end my run. So let's do some math. About half of rounds 1 and 2 were possible to qualify without jumping, giving us a 25% advance rate to the final. That sounds doable, but there's about a 10% chance to get a final that's possible to win. Even if we got one of these, all 7 of my opponents need to die before I'm forced to jump. Considering the disadvantage I'm at, I'd say that's also a 10% chance. Putting all of these odds together, it looks pretty unrealistic. I tried for over an hour without getting one of the two finals that give me a chance at winning, but later, I decided that even if the challenge seemed impossible, I should go back and try to at least get a close attempt. So here we are on Super Slide. There's many obstacles that will slow us down on this level since we can't jump over them like this swing at the beginning. I tried to run behind it, but it caught me on the way back. That cost me some precious time, but running ahead of it worked better for me. I can make it to this bounce pad without having to jump, and we're finally on the slide. It's near impossible to avoid these pink bars while sliding, but getting hit by one of them makes me stand up on the slide. And when I'm upright, I have more traction to run around the bar before I start sliding again. This part has no direct obstacles, which helps me make up the time I lost earlier. At this last part, I'm at the mercy of the level since I can't jump to change my momentum. I have to hit the boost pad without touching the windmill, or else I wouldn't have enough speed to reach the bounce pad without jumping. Space Drop is more forgiving than Honey Drop because of the low gravity. This slows down the pace of the game, gives me more time to choose a tile, and spreads out the competition so they don't mess me up. Instead of continuing my current path, I saw this bounce tile. Even if the depths of defeat lie below it, hitting one of these buys me about 3 more seconds and allows me to find a safer position where I can wait for the round to end. Finally, I got one of the two levels where it's possible for me to win. 
three were eliminated instantly, and for the first time during this challenge, I started to feel hope. A lot of the bombs are hitting the same side, which is good for me since I can't jump between tiles that are spread out. There's two large groups of tiles with a small bridge connecting them, and I decided to go for the other side where there's less people. Even though I was followed by another player, we ended up much better off when the bridge was destroyed. The sharks are usually supposed to get in our way, but the one in the center helped massively by blocking the bombs from reaching us, and deflecting them to the other group of tiles. Someone on that side saw the danger and fled to our side. Miraculously, we still have a group of 7 tiles to walk between when the other side ran out. At this point, it's down to whichever of us can position ourselves on the tile that doesn't explode. Someone tried jumping to the barrels beside us, but didn't have the running start that would be necessary to get there. Please. Please. It only took one more bomb to decide this match. Please? Yeah, we f did it! Let's go! Oh my god, I got so lucky! There's a lesson to be learned here. Even when a task seems impossible, you should try it anyways. You never know when fortune will smile upon you.